Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is quite a big and exciting one because I'm fitting the tyres to the wheels which make it look much more like a motorbike and much better. So to be doing that, these are the tyres I'm going to be using. They are Michelin City Pro 90-90-18 which basically means they're 18 inches in diameter. Uh, the tread is 90mm wide and the side wall is also sort of 90mm wide from the bead to the top. Um, then the, this is the inner tube here, which is obviously meant to match to this. A uh, bit of a story with the inner tube, I uh, bought this one over here um, and then managed to puncture it on the first time because I was an idiot. Um, and then I bought another one off eBay, but they sent the wrong size. So they then sent out another one, which is the one I'm now using. Um, and then Royal Mail was delayed and I had to pay extra postage. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then these are the speeds that I'm going to be using to get it on. So these are some tyre levers, basically just like bars but with some bits at the end. Um, and these, these are called rim protectors and these are actually quite important. What they do is they slide over the rim and they give you a nice soft surface to lever off so you don't dent the rim or scratch it or whatever. Uh, so let's get the wheel off and get to work. <laughs> I can't even undo it. Ah, oh, done the pinch. Done the pinch bolts. Ah, oh, yeah, still can stay there. Also added just a one, uh, two pop brake caliper just for testing. But anyway, here's the wheel. Now, as you can see, I've already done the rear wheel, um, and I kind of use this just to experiment a bit. Um, it turned out absolutely fine. Um, although that's where I did burst the other inner tube on it. I just pinched it on the rim. Uh, but hey. First time these things happen. There we go, done. <laughs> I wish it's not that easy. So the way a tire works is that you've got the tread on the outside, which is the bit that grips it. On my case, you've got a groove in the middle and then bits going outwards, which are used to direct the water. Um, and then you've got what's called the bead, which is essentially this kind of middle section. And if you look at it, it's kind of raised up and then there's like an indentation um, and that sits on this part of the rim here so you can see how the middle is shallower and then there's like a raised bit towards the edge that's where the bead sits uh, and on my rim it's actually kind of got like ridges along the side just to provide extra grip to keep the tire in place right so here's the rim and I've put it on a box uh, just so I'm not putting pressure on the hub and so that it just lifts it off the ground to make work easier that bit is taped just to marking a spoke um, I had to replace one because when I was tightening them all down I actually managed to strip the threads off so lesson don't do them down too tight, you know, as hard as you can, because uh, they will pop, especially with the load of the bike. So just get them nice and tight, but not too tight. Now the first thing we need is this, which is called rim tape or rim strip or whatever. Um, and basically it just goes over the spoke nipples and just stops them snagging on the tube. So the first thing to do is to find the valve hole, uh, and there's a hole in the strip. So you just kind of hold that in place, and then just kind of work it on, it's like a big rubber band really. Make sure it's all the same way and then just line up the holes and that's that done. Now there's some pretty cool footage I got of when I spin up the rear wheel of just kind of this flying off. I'll put it on the screen now but anyway. Now that's done uh, we need to put one bead of the tyre over the rim. Uh, now the first bit you can do by hand, you kind of just lip the bead under part of the tyre and then you just want to kind of push it on as far around as you can so just push it over um, you can normally get about halfway just doing it like this kind of by hand and then once you can't get any more on it's time to start using the tyre levers to get this section over here on so you just get under the bit that's not on and uh, loop the rim on like so, uh, bring it around as far as it will go, get a tie lever. Uh, most of them, one end's like a scoop, um, you can see, and the other end is just straight. Uh, the scoop's easier because it kind of locks onto the rim, but just get under there and uh, kind of just pry it over like that. and get one on the other side. And 
lever over like that. And then get the spoon out if you can. Then move it along, I don't know, between five and 10 centimeters. You only want to take out little chunks. Uh, you don't want to try and do a massive chunk of the tire because it'll just be much harder work. Now ideally what we want to be able to do is get to the stage where you can then take one of these out uh, and shift it along a bit. And as you can see, that just suddenly went over. Sometimes you get it where there's just a little bit left and it's getting towards the edge and you can just kind of get the last bit over by hand. Um, and sometimes, as you can see like that, it just snaps over. So you can now take the moon protectors off. And now it's time to put the inner tube in. This is the stage where I messed up last time by pinching the inner tube. Um, so here's the inner tube, as you can see. Um, this is a 3.25 to 3.5 inch tyre, which is the uh, imperial equivalent of this tyre, um, not the 18 inch. So on the valve core, you get a cap, which you need to take off and keep somewhere. Uh, then you also get two bolts, uh, sorry, two nuts even, which go on the outside. Um, then also this domed washer, which you leave on, that goes on the inside and kind of bridges the gap between the uh, rim and the rubber. Now for installing this, some people like to put a bit of air in it, but what I've actually found works is kind of just keeping it like this. Because um, when you fill it with air, it fills up the uh, gap between the tyre and the rim and just gives you more area to pinch. Whereas like this, it stays flat. Um, it does mean you have to kind of stuff it in a bit more, but it seemed to work fine on the back tyre, so give it a go. So the valve hole's down here, so I'm going to pop the tyre in. Now one of the hard parts is actually getting the valve through. So a little tip I use to get the valve through the hole is to get some string, tie it around it and then fish it through the hole um, and basically use it to put it through and you want to try it at least halfway down because um, the rope and um, the string is probably too thick to actually go through the rim hole and it's a matter of kind of fishing the tube. Just temporarily put a nut on there. And then basically just try and cut this or pull it through or something. So okay, so I just managed to push it through to the other side and expose a bit of string. So now it's just a matter of kind of cutting through it basically. So now that that valve's in, it's basically time to do what the same as we did with the other side in terms of getting the bead over. This time, of course, being very careful not to puncture the inner tube. Um, so really only putting as much of this as you need to. Okay, so just make sure that the tube is pressed in as far as it will go, um, just so it's not sticking on the rim, where it's at risk of getting caught or anything. So a few little extra tips with this um, bit. Again, you can start the first bit by hand. Um, what you want to do is get the bead of the other bit into the shallower channel. That way you get more room. You can see it's kind of pushed it over a bit. Um, this gives you more room to manoeuvre it basically. Okay, so that's as far as I can do it by hand. So I'm going to get one of these and install it. Here it goes, just take your time basically. Feel around that you're not going to catch anything, push the tube down. Right, so I've been moving around just a little bit at a time, putting one lever in, then five centimetres away, I'm not even that, putting the next one in, going around like that. And as you can see, I'm very nearly at the end. Um, if I apply just a little bit more pressure, or maybe even try and take this one out, I should just be able to get this last little bit on by hand. And there we go. As I said before, I think, um, if you, once you're, as you're going along, keep squeezing it to keep it off the bead and keep it in that centre channel. That will make your life much easier. Right, now what we're going to do is going to pull this valve core through, so just tighten that a little bit. Just enough so we can get an air pump on it. Air shouldn't really be coming in or out at the moment, maybe a little bit in just to uh, fill up the tube. 
So, this is where we find out if there's any leaks. So I can't hear any hissing. Um, and as you can see, it's just off the line. So I'll probably pump it up to about 20 PSI um, and just leave it for a bit and see if it holds the pressure. This could take quite a bit of pumping, so if you've got an air compressor, you're lucky. So it's been about half an hour. Let's connect up the gauge and see what it says. And yep, that is still on 20 PSI. A tiny bit of air came out, so yeah, successful whatever. Now, the next thing to note is that if you actually look on the tyre, there's a ring that goes round. And that's to indicate whether the bead's been seated properly. And what you want is for it to be like this, where you can see that line sticking above the rim. Um, if it's kind of recessed down under the rim, that means the bead's not on properly. Um, and you need to sort that out, it's a basic safety feature. Um, but yeah, you can see like here, for example, all sticking out. So that's good. So what I'm going to do now is push that nut on uh, reasonably far. You don't want to tighten this down with pliers, it's just to stop it pulling in. Um, and then put the second one on, which uh, stops the first one coming undone. And there we have it. Front tyre all assembled. And that looks much more like a motorbike. So yeah, nothing's pinged off, fallen apart, popped. So yeah, obviously you've also got the handlebars partly installed. Um, need to get some more extenders, put the top cap on. Someone mentioned all about the preload in the previous video. Um, so yeah, need to get that sorted. Um, got the VESC down here, which I'll probably use just to give it a short test ride. I'm planning to get a new Sabaton to replace um, this one down here relatively soon. Another thing is there is not much room on this suspension. In fact, these like stringy bits are actually touching the plastic. So yeah, this is literally the maximum tyre you can get on here. Back room. Is alright, I need to adjust it, but it's just short of a finger. Um, so essentially, this bike is kind of rideable, you know, it's got brakes, it's got a control, it's got wheels. So everything I do now is basically kind of making it better. That's why I'm thinking of it. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.